And then second, if you have, let's say, a handful of machines set up, let's say three. You have three machines set up as your server. So you have a Stratum 1 and then two Stratum 2s. So normally it's going to choose a Stratum 1. So let's say that on your Stratum 1, either somebody's up to shenanigans or something is terribly wrong with that device and it's configured with the wrong time. So you've got your two Stratum 2 servers saying it's November 2010. Then your Stratum 1 says, no guys, it's 1993. Well, your Cisco device is going to be smart enough to say, wow, you know what? These other dudes say it's 2010 and your time is way off from that. So even though you're Stratum 1, I'm going to trust these fools because it seems like they're in agreement and that seems like it's more likely. So that's the other time when it will not choose a lower stratum over a higher stratum. So now if they have the same stratum, say that you have two candidate stratum one servers. And do we have that down here? We don't in this example. But if you did, it's just going to pick the one that it gets communicated from first. So not a lot of magic in that. There is a way that you can override that. We'll show you that in a couple of slides here. So here on R1, we have uh, one, two, three, four different NTP servers set up. They're all configured. You can tell which one it has chosen as the master because that's the one with the asterisk. And it's chosen it based on the stratum. It says, okay, you're stratum one. I'm going to choose you. And then you can see here that you have a selected that it's going to be selected for the backup. So if this guy drops dead, it's going to go ahead and start using this. And the reason it's using this one is because it is stratum two. And here we have R1 and now we have five different NTP servers set up. And you can see here that two of these are stratum one. And the reason it chose the 193 address over the 204 address is simply because it received information from that 193 first. That's, that's its tiebreaker there. The selected bit, it's selected for possible synchronizations. And generally you could just read that as that's going to be the backup. If this guy fails, it's going to go to that. So here it's actually got two of them selected. It says, hey, I could go to one of these two. So it'll actually probably have a little election between these two. It will be this one because it is the stratum one, unless it's insane. And I mentioned that you can override the NTP master selection process and you do that with the NTP server and then provide the IP address or fully qualified domain name and then at the end put the keyword prefer and that's a global configuration command obviously. So here we can see that we only have one NTP association set up and that's to the 193 address. I go in and I configure a second NTP server at the 204 address and I say you know what let's prefer this guy. So now when we do a show NTP association so we can see that it has switched from the 193 to the 204. And that's because we said we want you to prefer that 204 server. So even though it got communications from the 193 prior to the 204, rather than using that as a tiebreaker, it's saying, let me go ahead and prefer this. So now you're thinking, oh, I can get up to all kinds of different shenanigans with this. I can make it choose a stratum 14 over a stratum one. I tested this and basically you can only do this within stratum. So if you had three different servers here, one's a stratum one, one's a two, one's a three, you can certainly throw in this configuration to say prefer the one with the stratum 3, but it will not prefer it. It will still prefer the stratum 1. So it's only going to prefer one server over another within a stratum. And I think we'll see that in the next slide. Yeah, and so I did in this case. I've got R1 configured with three NTP servers. Two of them are stratum 1 and the other one is stratum 2. So normally it would choose the stratum 1 server that communicates with us first. But in this case, I'm saying go ahead and prefer the stratum Stratum 2 server. But then when I show the associations, you could see here that we are still using the Stratum 1 server and the Stratum 2 server is not being used. What's interesting here is it has gone from a synced master to an unsynced master. So I've seen this where it does not override the Stratum. So you can't make a Stratum 2, 3, or 4 preferred over a Stratum 1. And the other thing it does is it kind of goose up your NTP, at least the output of the show NTP associations. I don't know if in you know underneath all that it's actually screwed up, but what it's doing here is it's gone and made this unsynced, which is not <laughs> optimal. And the other thing I've seen is when I've done this before is that what it'll do is it'll take the server that you're saying to prefer and it'll set its stratum to 16 and it never changes. So it doesn't get any time from that. So the lesson to be learned here is just use the prefer option if you must. I don't know why you would really even use it, but if you're going to do it, make sure that you're using it with devices that are have the same stratum. So if you're looking at your running configuration, you want to see all the bits that have NTP in it. Uh, you've set up two servers and you're having one prefer then you look 
that you're running configuration say clock period. Well, what the hell is that? I didn't configure that. Well, what's happening is that the Cisco device keeps track of the correction factor for NTP, and it's going to write that to the configuration. So it's keeping track of that for its own calculations. So don't set this manually. Don't mess with it. It does say that when you're copying your configuration to another device, say you have a saved out configuration, you're going to pop it on another device, or you've wiped out your router and you're reapplying the configuration to not use this line and this caution is directly from the Cisco documentation so it's straight from the horse's mouth. Let's say that you do not have access to a public NTP server but you still want to have your network time be synchronized across your network. You do have a route that you can go and I would only do this as a last resort. You should prefer to use public NTP servers if possible but what you can do is you can set up a Cisco device to act as an authoritative time source as an NTP server basically and how you would do that is by using in the NTP master global configuration command. So you'll go into global configuration, you'll type in NTP master, and you can set a stratum number. If you hit enter, it will use the default stratum of eight. I would suggest doing that. Don't set a one or two on there because if you do eventually get some public NTP servers, depending on how low you set that, it may prefer this and you're going to always get more accurate clock from these NTP servers. So when we do this, we go ahead and we take a look at our status. You can see here I did not provide a, a, a stratum number, so it should be using eight and that's what it's using. The, the internal clock is going to be using stratum eight. So when we do the NTP association, it's actually going to associate to itself with these uh, 127 addresses. So so it's saying, hey, yeah, I didn't specify a server, but since I'm a master, I get time from myself. So I'm getting it from a 127 address. My reference clock is myself. The stratum is seven. So when it says it's eight, again, it, it's a technicality. Your clock will be a seven, which is going to be you. When anybody decides to use you as an NTP server, you're going to be seen as a stratum eight device. Where this may come in handy is if you're using something like Dynamips for your labs. You can set up Dynamips to have a connection to the internet through your network interface card. I'm not going to go into how to do that because what happens with that is that I end up with a lot of people asking me questions that are Dynamips specific and based on how your computer set up, how you set that up, I can't troubleshoot that for you. We will show you in the lab portion that I will be using that type of setup. So we will be going out to get public NTP servers via that type of connection. In in that situation where you either don't want to do that or you can't do that um, or if you have a lab that does not have any connection to the internet it's good to know how to do this so that you can set up an NTP server and then go ahead and set up peerings or clients to pull this device. That said I would not do this on a production network and we have some notes down here that tell you not to do this basically. So but once you have it set up you can go ahead to another router here and we're going to use R4 and we're going to set this up as a client to R3 which we've just set up as the master so it's an authoritative time source and then when we do our show NTP association we can see that we are associated to router 3 and there's our reference clock which we know tells us where router 3 is getting its time from so if you see this as a reference clock it's a pretty good chance that they have just set themselves up as a master clock because it's getting from, from a 127 address the stratum is 8 as we told you it would be and we're synced and configured and here's our warning directly from Cisco documentation saying basically don't set this with a low stratum number because it's easy to override valid time sources. So you can see here if somebody was being a dork and they went ahead and did this on a router in your network and you already had public NTP servers set up and they went in and just dicked around and set up a Cisco device as a, uh, as a stratum one device. So if that's in your list of servers to use for NTP, it's going to prefer that because it, you've just set up a stratum one device even though you don't have uber accurate time and it's a good idea to set your software clock uh, with the clock set command before you go ahead and make this an authoritative time server for the obvious reason that you want accurate time the other bit is that you could have a unsynchronized NTP server and you won't be able to provide NTP information to your client the other thing is there is a gotcha with this that if you don't set your clock at all even if it's accurate say it's got it from the hardware clock or whatever it will not work I've run into that with some labs where you're told to set this up and you've got the time on there, everything's configured right, it just is not working. That's because you'll have to at some point 
set this clock. One other gotcha with this is that you're going to want to be using a router that has a hardware clock because it's going to use the software clock as its NTP clock source and so you're going to be giving out time and it could be you know relatively accurate as accurate as you need. Say that your device that you set up as the NTP master reloads and it does not have a hardware clock all of a sudden it's 1993 and depending on how it comes up it may not advertise at all because it'll just say oh it's not synchronized or it's not been set so I'm not going to even use this as a time source but say it even gets past that bit it's going to be advertising the time as 1993 so you want to have something that has a hardware clock and if you do have a device with a hardware clock I would strongly suggest using this command and this is going to update the hardware clock which is referred to as the calendar from NTP so most likely your NTP source is going to be more accurate than your hardware clock so periodically and I don't know what the period is it's some uh, iOS period that it's just automatically done it will go ahead and update your hardware clock from NTP and that's a really good command to have on your router use this on all your devices because what this does is this basically has the effect of synchronizing your hardware clocks so NTP is going to synchronize your software clocks but if your hardware clocks aren't set to that time they can have widely disparate times whereas if you have this command on all your devices it's going to you know whatever occasionally means it's going to go in there and update the hardware clock time from the NTP which means that you have the benefit of having now your hardware clock standardized which you know for some devices that they reload it's going to take a look at that hardware clock first and if it can't get out the NTP it's going to use that clock so it's it's a good thing I would strongly suggest using this command so that's the last of the pure NTP information for this lesson uh, we're going to touch on a couple of things here before we wrap this up and that's setting the time zone as well as using daylight saving time as I noted earlier NTP is going to feed you time in UTC only so it's not going to make allowance is for your local time zone or for daylight saving time and if you viewed my other lesson and you were offended by the fact that I said daylight savings time instead of the correct daylight saving time well I'm sorry for English speakers it flows off the tongue a whole lot easier to say daylight savings time and I really don't understand the difference in definition anywho but getting back to this so you're getting your time feed in UTC so a lot of times what you're gonna want to do is on your router you're gonna want to convert that NTP time from UTC to either the time zone that's local to that router if you're in Minneapolis you'd want central time zone or if you decided and a lot of places do this they decide to use one time zone across their network whether the router's in Minneapolis or you know Machu Picchu uh, so what you're gonna want to do is convert that UTC to a time zone and how you do that is you go into global configuration and you use clock time zone and then you set a word in this case it's CST for central standard time and then you provide an offset and you can find out what your offset set is from the internet or if you're running Windows you can usually just check the Windows clock there but in this case we want to have uh, six hours difference minus six from UTC so you can see up here that the time in UTC was 1637 after we apply this not only does it correct the time to 10 well it took me obviously four minutes to do this 1041 damn it and it's gonna be in Central Standard Time. Did you guys catch that quick on the fly edit that I did? So it's going to apply the offset and then apply whatever your time zone is here. Okay, there's a caveat or two here. The first one doesn't apply to NTP. Go check out my other video, the manually setting time. This caveat will apply to setting the time manually. Uh, the one here is that your time zone, it doesn't check for what the time zone, if it's an actual time zone or not. So you can put anything in there that you want, like poop or boobies, be as childish as you want, and it will show that as the time zone. It will apply the offset. We'll just use it as a time zone. And the third is that iOS does not automatically adjust for daylight saving, not savings daylight saving time but there is a configuration command that will automatically adjust for that again NTP won't adjust for it you have to do this locally on your router the command to apply this is clock summer time so here we set our time zone to central standard time and minus six is our offset so then for summer time we're going to actually be minus five instead and like I said you can go down the internet and find out what your time zones are as far as the offset for both daylight saving time and your normal time zone so I'm going to say that when it's daylight saving time I want to display CDT for central daylight time and then I'm going to go ahead and hit recurring if you're in the United States that's all you need to do 
is hit recurring it's going to set it up with an offset of one hour you know one hour difference so if your offset is negative six it's going to be negative five instead and then it's going to automatically use the correct dates for United States daylight saving time and this bit is just showing you know if you change the date whether it will apply this or not the other cool command is if you do a show clock detail as we saw earlier once you've set up summertime it will actually show you what the parameters are for that and actually that's cool enough that I'm going to show it to you here if you do a show clock detail it tells you time source is NTP but it also tells you when your summer time starts and ends and in this case it has just recently ended this is November 9th and it ended last Sunday for me so you can see here now I'm on Central Standard Time rather than Central Daylight Time